I'm here with Scott Swing at Velocity Aircraft. In this week's episode, we travel down to Sebastian, Florida and take a factory tour of Velocity Aircraft. And then take a short flight with Scott Swing. What do you call it? Unicorn? <laughs> <laughs> What we got here, Dwayne? This is our welding room. Um, uh, we basically build everything in-house. What you're gonna see here is a lot of fixtures. Um, this is a fixture used on the Continental 550 engine, engine used in our XL. Uh, there's two different brands of that engine. Some are turbocharged, some are not. So uh, this fixture sets it up so we can completely build the engine mount on this fixture. We have fixtures for the Lycoming mounts which is what this starts as. This is a bell crank. We cut the steel, this all 4130. We cut these, we cut these, and then we do all the welding. Ailerons, that's a finished one, timed, ready to ship out with the kit. So, so namely control linkages and engine mounts is what you use for... Engine mount, control systems, we make a lot of stuff. Our machines are up, scale, you can tell they were used to make bombers in World War II. At least, you know, people who are in the machine shop business would understand that. They never wear out, and we produce a small volume of parts, therefore we don't need CNC type equipment. Simple stuff, right? Yep, real simple. Simple stuff with simple people operating them. They get the job done, yeah, yeah I'm right. very simple. <laughs> okay, a lot of little machine parts. This is part of the uh, seat mechanism. These all get bolted together. This goes on the seat, this goes on the upper part, and then this adjusts to give that seat some uh, additional adjustment. Well, we make this kind of stuff. All right, so on to uh, the real heart of what you guys do here, and that's composite. Uh, explain to me Correct. the type of materials that you use. Is it just straight on fiberglass or? Mostly. Mostly it's fiberglass. There's a variety of different weaves. This is a, a very coarse material for our wings. Um, it's a three-in-one uh, material, three layers going in different directions. Peel ply, people who are building experimental uh, airplanes with fiberglass will understand what the peel ply does. Unidirectional material, we use it in some areas. Very coarse bid, we use in the cowlings areas of the airplane. Any part that we build that's ultimately going to be painted, we will prime the mold before we make the part. So when the part comes out of the mold, typically like this, this is the part come out of the mold, it's a carbon part, but the side that you're gonna see is pre-primed. It eliminates a lot of pinholes that would be normal to a fiberglass part that doesn't have a primer on it. The majority of the structure is regular E-glass. We use S-glass in the manufacture of our spars and our gear legs. S glass is an S for structure. It's a structural uh, form of glass. We use carbon to wrap the uh, gear legs. The, the gear itself is made out of stranded uh, uh, S glass. And then the final wrap over that is this, it's like the Chinese finger puzzles. It'll expand where it needs to expand. It'll retract where it needs to uh, retract as the gear starts big and it gets small down toward the end. Hey everyone, let me take just a moment to thank our sponsors that make all of this possible. Great companies like Airworks, AirTech Coatings, Clemens Insurance Agency. Find links to each of their websites in the description below and tell them you found them here on the Experimental Aircraft channel. And if you haven't already, I invite you right now to subscribe, hit the like button for this video, and check out our affiliate links in the description below. This is uh, the part of our Builder Assist program. This gentleman here has uh, brought his airplane in here for us to help him finish it. 
He's he's a what do you call it? Unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> nice light. <laughs> nice light. Uh, <laughs> so you'll be flying this uh, at the end of the year, huh? That's the goal. Yeah. Okay. All right, Dwayne. So explain to us uh, how this comes out of the mold as two pieces, and two when pieces. in the process do you join it you and have, stuff? You have a top mold. Again, since we're going to be painting this, we pre-prime the molds before we make the part. You have a top and a bottom, and the process is before you put the two together, we work on the bottom half, which makes it much easier to put in the uh, retract system if it's a retract gear, um, put in the bulkheads, and uh, the things that no normally would be on this bottom half of the fuselage. Ultimately, we assemble the top half to the bottom. That's what this joint here is. And then the doors get cut out, the hole gets cut out of the side. Uh, we have pre-molded doors that go into that area. And then there's a flange put in there and a hinging mechanism. And then there's, there's uh, pins, um, like a, a big bank hole. There's pins on the door itself that go out into receptacles that are in the fuselage. That basically completes the fuselage. Uh, windshield, side windows, door windows are all put in on the top on the top unit before we put it back onto the bottom unit. Fuel streaks, so we carry all the fuel. Uh, there's a molded part bottom, molded part top. The builder full, uses full-size templates, put in the fuel baffles to keep the fuel from sloshing. In the case of a twin, we put the end of the cells right on top of here. The firewall is mounted to a spar that goes through here. And uh, the cowling is, is fit to the engine. In this case, we're putting in a couple of UL 520T turbocharged engines. Five, uh, 220 horsepower. The new one. Yeah. yeah. UL engines. Uh, at altitude, it uh, projected uh, speeds in that 240 knot category at 18,000. We try to do as much as the FAA will allow us to do. And uh, today, with some of the changes made in the rules, uh, we can help these builders a lot more than we used to, because now it's based on, on tasks rather than hours. All right, so this is where the real magic happens with... <laughs> That's correct. We start with these billets of foam. It's actually flotation foam. And the advantage of using flotation foam to build our wings is that the airplane won't sink. If you have to put it in the water, it'll float. So you're the Boston Whaler of aircraft. That's it. We got it. <laughs> Typical uh, foam core that we would use to build the, uh, in this case, this particular piece of foam is for a rudder or the vertical portion of our, of our uh, wing. And if you look at the end, you will see the outline. It's kind of hard to see, but you will see the outline, which would be the upper end of the winglet. We leave them in the billet to protect it from damage. This is the narrow part. This end would be the thicker part. You can see the outline here of the, uh, of the rudder. Okay. Once I open this up, you can see it a little better. Oh, so this has already been cut out. Like you see, we you just... already cut them. Okay. They're hot wire cut, so the builder don't have to do that. If he, if we're, if we're, <coughs> if we're building a fast build, we do all that work for you. Um, we also install these, do all the glass work and the primer. If you're building the airplane, you'll get this, you'll get this billet, and then you will do the glassing uh, yourself. Basically, there is a wire right here. And uh, with one person on each side of a billet, using a template that's made out of aluminum, it's typical of trailing edge of a wing. There's numbers here, one, two, three, four, five, so forth, all the way around. This gets attached to the end of the, of the billet. One on each end. With this hot wire, we can follow this around, one fellow on one side, one on the other, 
he's calling out numbers as he's pulling this hot wire through the billet. Hot wire will cut this foam like it's butter, hot butter. So he calls out these numbers as he's going. One, two, three, four. This guy's following that same number all the way around. So when he gets all the way to the end, he has a, a wing, a trailing edge of the wing that looks just like that. The leading edge again of a wing and that's already been cut. So it's just a matter of attaching this to a spar, front and back, and then glass over that whole thing to complete a wing. What, so this what happens in this hangar here, Dwayne? Uh, this, this basically, this building was designed uh, around the idea that we could do the finish work on a velocity. Finish meaning wiring, uh, final finish meaning uh, sanding, painting. Uh, we paint them on the airport. We do have our own upholstery shop. We do the interiors here. Uh, the main thing is the wiring and instrument panel work. Uh, we do a lot of that. Uh, it's convenient. We also use it as our uh, Head Start program. So if somebody says, I want to build the airplane, but I don't want to do it all my, on my own, I want to help. So they can bring the airplane here and we'll help them build their airplane. Um, that's true if it's a single or a twin. In many cases, we do the conditional inspections on them. Um, we're not going to sign off a conditional inspection unless we're sure it's safe. So sometimes, in this case, conditional inspection, we found some problems with it. We've now corrected those and it's finishing it up now. So I got a little crooked one up. Throttle, throttle forward a little bit. Scrape. Okay, so it's scraped, we straightened it up, so we'll see how it comes out. This is, a, this is a radio wiring shop. shop. This is a this is a radio shop. Radio shop with a big honking engine in the middle of it. This is a typical. This is the the engine, the, the face plate for the the twin turbo turbine engines. That's what these are. Okay. This is the face plate. You've got display here, display here, display here, display here. These two are engine displays. This is a smaller version of there's, this. There's no panel left anymore. It's just there's a great no big big screen. Left. Nothing left. It's uh, <laughs> almost almost nothing. That is the panel for it over here. That is the wiring panel. So this is basically. Good morning. My name is Brian. I am the shop manager here at Velocity Aircraft. I also run the avionics shop in here as well. Do all the wiring. Um, a little bit of background on Velocity Aircraft, at least the production aircraft here. We do almost exclusively Garmin G3X platforms. Um, pretty much custom built. Uh, each aircraft um, is tailored to the owner's needs. Um, with the Garmin G3X, most of the time we're doing full autopilot and IFR packages across the board. So we build the tray, the panels, we lay up the panel face, um, and then we build the harness all in-house here. Uh, taking that from this room out to the aircraft uh, through configuration and flight testing as well. So pretty fun all the way around. Have a good time here at Velocity Aircraft. Um, I also run the shop, uh, manage the projects to include service, um, the builds, do build assist, and bringing everybody up to speed along with uh, some parts inventory and things along those lines. So. Um, very, very blessed to be involved in experimental aviation. Um, we have a ball here every day, to say the least. So that's what I do here. So this is both, it'll be the avionics, the airframe, and in this case, it's actually the engine harness all built into one. So the way I like to do is I build the back tray and then we lay it in into the jig here and then run the wires accordingly. Um, try to keep it very clean. Um, a little OCD sometimes with my wiring, so. <laughs> they should be. Um, yep, yep, so uh, one of the first things we do is we figure out exactly all of our circuits um, that we include in, that are to be included in the aircraft itself. Uh, I really prefer the vertical power as a solid state circuit breaker package. Um, the vertical power pro is what we use. 
for my essential bus setup. I do have a secondary blade fuse box for all non-essential functions. Uh, most velocities um, end up with somewhere between 30 to 40 total circuits. So the key to our system is laying out the circuits uh, and we like to, to really refine it in the sense that we want to uh, detail draw the circuit breaker value we're going to sign, the size of wire that we're going to run, and any additional notes that we might have. In the case of a vertical power, what switches we're going to sign to what circuit as well. So this is a pretty good example um, of uh, this is actually for a twin turbine project. Um, so we have 14 switches in the overhead and I have another 14 switches in the lower panel. So pretty switch intense, intensive <laughs> panel to say the least. So. So I'm here with Scott Swing at Velocity Aircraft, and uh, luckily he had some time in his, his day today to give us a demo flight. And uh, this is the XL model? XL, yeah, TXL, turbocharged XL, which stands for extra large. Extra large, here, extra, yeah. extra big horsepower. What is the horsepower of the turbocharger? Uh, th this one is a 310 horse TSI 0550 Continental. So they do have a 350 horse version, but it's basically the same engine, just, just run the manifold pressure up a little bit and uh, change the uh, RPM a little bit. All right, let's do it. That's the air seals. Sebastian traffic, Spermal 916, Tango Charlie's uh, departing runway at 28, Sebastian. And you'll feel the turbo kick in. And again, I'm going to control it a little bit with throttle, so I'm not going to use as much. Okay. You will feel it. There it is. There it is, coming on right now. Really kicks you in the butt, doesn't it? Oh yeah. There's 35 and a half inches. Rotate the nose at 70. Go ahead and lift off. Positive rate, gear up. Nice. Now one thing that uh, I think I did another video of uh, of this, and somebody was uh, was saying to me. Let's go ahead and I'll show you what the climb rate is if I leave everything forward. Here's my climb rate right here. Okay. If I leave everything forward, that's what kind of climb rate you get. That's incredible. Almost 3,000. You can get up to the air conditioning real quick in the summertime. Yep. So I'm pulling the power back now to about 27 inches. Maybe I'll do 25 inches. We'll do a sedate cruise today. And I'll pull the prop back. But I've, I've been in a cozy before but not a not a velocity and I think your canard is that's heavier too is a bit wider oh longer, yeah longer canard yeah it's definitely uh, larger is this the uh, the demonstrator we see at most of the shows you've taken this to Oshkosh yeah. and uh, Sun and Fun and so yep. forth now you can see that even with hands off whatever I set the the climb at is what we're gonna get so right. I can I can actually roll the plane this is rudder only and roll right over to the left and looks like I'm actually stick a little bit that way. And then if I want to roll back to the right, this is right rudder. So not even a, a bad cord, uncoordinated turn right. using rudder only. So it works pretty good. Yeah, it's very subtle. And again, it's going to stay whatever altitude I have. So a beautiful day to be flying in Florida. Yep. So you can see the video, the view, uh, you know, down, up, we don't have a wing underneath us or over the top of us, so we have really good visibility. Uh, traffic right ahead of me. We'll just go to 3,000 and level off. You get more of a feeling that you're still in a car than you are an airplane, actually. Yeah, very comfortable, for sure. Okay, so I'm just leveling off at 24 inches. So this would not be, you'd never want to cruise at this, at this uh, lower power setting, but... This is putzing around in a velocity of 100 miles an hour. 113 knots true. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it up into a pitch bike. I'm trimming about 100 or so. Yeah. I'll pull it up into that. Actually, this is probably closer to it, but... We're at a pretty good angle at the moment. Yep. And then as soon as it goes, there's the nose bobbing. See the canard shaking?
second. Yep. Two down, let go of it. Okay. Yes. I'm just gonna let it go. Hot dogging it down low in a, in a high speed bank where you might where you might uh, um, you know, get a get a high speed stall or something like that. We tend we tend we don't do that. The older I get, the more conservative I get, so I don't uh, I don't make I don't Absolutely. do that kind of stuff. I'm with you. Of course, we want to be 500 feet before we get over land or people. There's a B1RD. Just in case. Just in case. Puking is not allowed on any Delta flight. We'll just do adverse, y'all. We'll just do a little bit of a roll left and right without it, and then I'll use a little bit of rudder. That way I'm not yanking and banking too much on you. I should have asked you before I went zooming around. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just in case, and then I'll head on back. So we got a wind out of the north, so I'm just, I'm going to go ahead and leave it crabbed until I get in close, and then I'll kick it around. And Sebastian, 916, Tinker Charlie, short final to eight. So an injection works better. See a little gyro? Uh, Those look like fun. You ready to go? Yeah. Oh, no, not yet. We're so power's off. On 90 over the fence, 95 over the fence. The, uh, caravan out. 90. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and use my aileron. It's kind of the harder side to do it. There you go. Yeah, appreciate it. Right, right tire first. On the brakes. Now, this got big brakes. They're brakes off a 210, which has a 4,000 pound gross weight or something. We got 3,000. So, we have brakes as soon as you get all yeah. three on the ground. And if I can, yeah, I mean, because we have 3,000 feet here, so I got plenty of runway. But I probably would not. Yeah, I get it. I probably would not use more than a half mile strip, especially if you're loaded up with 2,700 feet or so. But you can get on the brakes pretty hard. The engine is behind the tires, so you actually transfer a little weight to them instead of the other way around. Camera's still on there. Good, so that was a good, good sign. Yeah. I don't know how much load's on that camera at a couple hundred miles an hour, I wonder. I appreciate it. You, uh, we just got to wait for the, uh, to here, engine map, wait for the TIT, the last, to come down below 1,000. I'll go ahead and turn the radio master off. Well, that's our factory tour and short flight of the Velocity aircraft. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out the description below for links to Velocity aircraft, our sponsors, and affiliates. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.